Over the years, I've gotten a lot of questions about mobile development. Obviously, I worked at Xamarin, so I was a little partial to Xamarin, Xamarin Forms, but often developers are upgrading legacy Windows applications from other frameworks and at the same time building mobile applications. Of course, you can build mobile applications and desktop applications with Xamarin Forms, but sometimes those applications are fundamentally different. So you want to be able to share some code and a lot of that logic, but you want to build different applications because sometimes desktop apps have different requirements. On a recent live stream, someone was upgrading an application from a non.NET or C-sharp framework, and they wanted to use C-sharp everywhere because they were using Xamarin Forms for their mobile applications. Had a lot of sort of input as to what Microsoft frameworks are available for them to use today, but stick around the end because I have some more thoughts now that I've had a few weeks to think about it so I can come back and talk to you about some awesome community projects that are out there and other things you might want to consider when you build for the desktop. So tune in. All right, so Elog asks in the chat, hey, I need to build a new mobile application for iOS and Android. And at the same time, I have an existing legacy Windows application that I want to upgrade and convert to C Sharp. Now, these two applications are going to be different up uh, all up. But what piece of technology should I use for my mobile apps and for my desktop apps? Now, uh, Oleg is in a very interesting situation because they have an existing thing called a Power Builder app. And this thing, I I've never heard of, but I guess it's like a WinForms-esque sort of data entry CRUD operation thing. And it has multiple windows that pop up, all sorts of different things that are popping up on top of it. And the mobile application needs to run on iOS and Android, but the Windows application needs to run on Windows 7 and Windows 10. Now, I would say, hey, you know, think of your timelines and probably try to get everyone on Windows 10 just for you know, security and for just, you know, upgrading in general, make your life easier as a developer for testing. But what technology should they use? Now, like I said earlier, the question comes about, and I got more context from them, is that this is CRUD operation. So it's going to be different data type um, applications for prescriptions and patient data and all different things. And fundamentally, they'll use the same back end, but they'll have different UI and different, you know, purposes for the mobile and the, the desktop application. So they want to know, should I use um, basically Xamarin and Xamarin Forms uh, on the mobile or wait for down in Maui because down in Maui is coming out, which will have iOS, Android, iPad OS, Windows and Mac. Or should I use a combination, which is Xamarin Forms for my mobile apps and maybe WinForms, WPF or UWP with WinUI for my windows desktop application this is a great question i get asked this all the time of mixing and matching different pieces of technology now i built an application called my stream timer it's open source i'll put a link down over there um since i'm i know i'm recording this for youtube highlights but we're there but the mystreamtimer.com um i originally built out as a wpf application with dotnet core which would now be dotnet 5 and then i built the mac version of it with xamarin forms and the, the, the XAML and stuff is like similar, um, yet a little bit different. And I had different purposes. I wanted to kind of trial run WPF for .NET Core. So I just wanted to see how it worked with the packaging system. Um, but what I would say overall is, well, what, what do you know? You know, what are your timelines and what's the complications? It sounds like the apps are fundamentally different, but you do want to have similar maybe architecture, maybe some shared services, some shared models, some shared API calls, authentication. So um, it depends, really. It depends on your business requirements. It sounds like for the mobile applications, it's pretty much no brainer. It's like, I would definitely go all in on writing those fresh with Xamarin Forms today. If you need to ship it between now and the end of the year, um, you could also um, start developing with Xamarin Forms today and look to migrate to .NET MAUI in the future. Um, and down in Maui is the evolution of Xamarin Form, so you're going to get all the benefits and more um, there, and it should be an easy transition. So I think the mobile applications are quite, quite standard, I would say, um, in that regard. Now with down in Maui, you are going to get Windows and Mac OS support, um, first class support there, and iPad OS. Now Xamarin Forms does support um, 
UWP applications today. And in fact, I use it for my stream timer. I eventually converted the WPF app, my, my stream timer, that was using WPF to just share the XAML and all the code with my Mac application with Xamarin Forms. And I did that just because of complexities. And as I grew it, I you know was adding more features and I didn't want to duplicate the UI twice. But since your applications are fundamentally different um, and you require multiple Windows support and you require some of those advanced, um, advanced things that you do need to run on a Windows 7, like the one thing I would say is you could come in with .NET MAUI because .NET MAUI is going to give you uh, multi-window support on your Windows application, but then you know you are waiting basically for that to hit GA, um, and you can start developing today with Xamarin Forms back and forth. You know it is July right now; it's end of July 2021. So of course, you ask me this question in six months or 12 months, it may vary, and to say go all in on .NET MAUI. Um, but you did say that there's a business requirement of windows seven, and that's the kicker there, which probably means you're going to need to stick to WinForms or WPF. And I would probably go with WPF, uh, only because you're going to have, um, a lot of those capabilities of multi-windowing, all the stuff that you already know, and you'll have the benefits that like the XAML tooling, XAML hot reload, all that stuff is going to work across the board. Um, all the stuff that's coming. Um, hot reload is already there. It's like all the hot reload and new hot reload coming in visual studio 2022 will also be coming. Um, there's designers, all that stuff that you would, you would want and XAML live previewers. So I think you're going to get a lot of benefits from that today for just the windows application. But then I want you to structure your code that your mobile apps live side by side, this WPF application, and they start to share some of the business logic. So things like common services, your data models, um, just core business logic, right? If you're making Azure calls or rest calls or whatever you're doing databases, a lot of that code can be streamlined across, you know, your mobile applications with Xamarin forms and then your WPF application, uh, because that's how I started my stream timer. Just the UI was different and that was it. So like I said, your application is relatively fundamentally different because you said it's a different app on desktop and a different app on mobile, but it doesn't mean that you can't use the same tooling, the same languages, the same, um, experience when you're developing. So based on your needs today and your complexity of your windows application, you may want to look at WPF because you're going to have all those multi windowing things. If your timeline is, I'm not going to start this until the end of the year, you know, when done at six, um, GAs in, in November, you might want to look at Don and Maui in that regard, or, um, in this regard, if you're like, Hey, I'm doing the mobile app first, that's awesome. That's a great situation because maybe your desktop application can get done way later. So just do the mobile application first and then decide what you want to do with the desktop application, because that stuff is going to change a lot with .NET 6 and .NET MAUI coming in. So maybe that's not like the final like up, down here. Yes. You know what you want to go, but ideally that gives you some context of the pieces of technology out there. The best part is that your C sharp, your .NET code is going to run everywhere. So no matter what you're doing, you'll be good to go. So hopefully that helps a little bit with some context of, Hey, I need to build a mobile app. And also I got to do desktop development. What should I pick? What UI technology should I pick? At the end of the day, it comes down to like, also, if you know, win forms, like the back of your hand, then just do WinForms forms. Cause it's, you're going to be super productive, at least for the, the desktop stuff. Whereas, you know, when it comes to mobile, you know, Xamarin forms is a, is a great choice for you to go into. Anyways, there you go. Hopefully that was helpful. Now, obviously I had a lot of input specifically on Microsoft frameworks, but there's a lot more out there. You know, the nice thing about WinForms, WPF, UWP, XamarinForms.MI, they all run on .NET, so you can use C Sharp, F Sharp, VB.NET, anything that you want, basically, to build those applications and share code between them. But there's a lot more in the .NET ecosystem, of course, that you can use to build applications. You know, as long as, like I said, you are thinking about putting your models and your view models separately from your user interface, you can go between these different frameworks easily for your specific needs. There's some amazing projects out there that will enable you to build beautiful applications that are not just from Microsoft themselves. Things like Avalonia is an amazing cross-platform library for desktops. So you can do Mac, Linux, 
Windows as well. It's all built on, on powered by .NET, which is really cool. So you can use all of your view models, all of your SAML, your things that you know and love. Also, of course, there's Uno, which is an awesome platform as well that takes UWP XAML or even Xamarin Form XAML and enables you to build cross-platform applications on top of Xamarin, on top of UWP, um, and even for the browser with WASM. So there's all different options out there. Now, one thing I was thinking about too is that you, of course, even have the ability to use Blazor. You know, why not use Blazor everywhere? That's an option which will integrate into .NET MAUI too. But you could think, use things like Electron.NET, for example. And you could build out a web UI and a desktop UI with Blazor. And of course, .NET MAUI even bring it to mobile applications too. The thing is, what are you used to? What are you going to really be comfortable with developing in every day? Is that Razor? Is that XAML? Is it something like WinForms? So you pick your best knowledge of where you're going to go. Now, if you're looking for the new and the hottest things that are out there, like I said, obviously .NET MAUI is coming out, um, and that's going to be the latest you know thing from Microsoft. But there's a lot of great tech out there, all powered by all powered by the amazing .NET community that's out there. That's the thing that's so great about this community. Why I'm part of it, why I love it, is that there's amazing frameworks that are built on top of .NET with C Sharp, F Sharp, and VB. So, anyways, I hope that this was a helpful video of just kind of talking through in my mind, top of mind, as it was coming in with. The complex scenario that that uh, that 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 the user had, a viewer had, uh, but also you know let me know what you think. Are there specific frameworks that you're using on your desktop? Put them down in the in the comments down there below. Let me know what you think. Um, and of course, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. And don't forget to hit that like button down there. That super helps the channel. And subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. <laughs>